Brandon Dempsey here with the Worship Team Training Tuesday show and also our Worship Team Training University. What is up, everybody? Great to see you today on this terrific Tuesday. How are you? You see Laura Marriott right here, our guest for today's show, and she is in the hot seat, about ready to go, and we are glad that you are with us today, and we ask that you would uh, go ahead, swipe, and invite let everybody know uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Let everybody know what's going on. And uh, thanks so much for coming. Swipe and invite on Facebook Live and also on Periscope. How are you guys? What is up? We're so glad that you guys are here today. We are talking about leading worship confidently. And what does that mean? We have our full article that's out. You can find that at Worship Team Training University. You have to become a member to see that full article, actually. But we do these live shows on Tuesdays for you so that you can see a little bit about what we talk about and the inside of things on our university. So we're so glad that you guys are with us today. So what is up? we got good friends. Abigail and Barry is on with us. And who else is on with us today? So great to have you. My name is Brandon Dempsey. I'm a follower of Jesus and also a, the CEO and founder of WorshipTeamTraining.com at Worship Team Training University. We do exactly what we say. We train worship teams and worship leaders just like you. We come to your church to do a weekend workshop with your team, hands-on practical training that fits you and nobody else. And we also do mentoring that is one-on-one -on -one style uh, for you, your worship leader, your pastor, whatever it may be. You can find everything you want to know at worshipteentraining.com slash workshops for that page you know, or slash mentoring worshipteentraining.com and check out our brand new university site that's wttu.co you'll see that in the title of this video right here at the very end wtt.c wttu sorry .co and you'll find all of our membership packages there good videos like this we had um elias dummer this past friday if you guys watched it and you can still go to wttu.co slash city, that's C-I-T-Y, to get your free download. And also, if you get a membership today, we'll throw in the brand new Benediction album for you. So check that out. You can find that later on. And I'm going to be putting up the link right now where you can find all that good stuff on the events page. And uh, a little bit of news of what's coming this week. Tomorrow, we have Crystal Lewis. Crystal Lewis, she's emailing me right now. What, what is she, why is she doing that? Crystal Lewis is going to be with us for an awesome vocal webinar tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central. You can't miss it. Oh, man, Crystal's such a great all-around gal. Uh, experience, you bet. Um, one of the most phenomenal Dove Award um, uh, nominations and award winners in Christian music. She's going to be doing a vocal webinar with us tomorrow, the 26th, at 2 p.m., right here at Worship Team Training at WTTU.co. You can find the links that I'm putting out right now. Uh, so please be sure to go ahead and grab that as I'm doing that right here. And also next week, we have our fantastic, beloved, I can't wait, Tony Guerrero is going to be back with us next week as well. That's going to be awesome. As you guys know, Tony is just one of the most uh, the most, I would say, not just qualified, highly skilled, high wisdom dudes in songwriting and also producing. He's going to be with us next Thursday, so you can't miss that. Uh, now, coming up this Thursday, this week, we have David Balash. That is, yes, that is Paul Balash's son. David Balash has a, an album out that came out in the spring this past year called Labyrinth, and it is fantastic. It's just instrumental with vocals, prayer music. And uh, wow, he's going to be on the show this Thursday to tell us more about creativity and worship and talk a little bit about his music. So if you want to watch that, become a member today at WTTU.co. Let's get right on with it. Laura Marriott comes, from us, comes to us from sunny Southern California, and she is with us. Actually, she's in the northern part of California. I got that wrong. Uh, but it's all the same because California is beautiful. No, she is. You are in the southern part, right, Laura? Yes, I'm in the desert. <laughs> yes, the desert. Where where else should would she be? Of course. So uh, we got Laura. Laura is uh, she is a worship leader in that area. She's been leading worship for a long time. She also does her own periscopes, her own Bible studies. She's done that for quite a while. Writes songs, leads worship, has a beautiful voice, and we've had her on the show before. So everybody, please welcome Laura Marriott. Laura, how are you today? I'm doing really well. Thanks, Brandon. Well, we're so glad that you're doing very well. That's just awesome. <laughs> I love it. Laura's a great friend. We've had her here for, we've been friends now for about a couple of years, right? 
about yeah, that or a year yeah, maybe yeah, it's a new friendship mm -hmm. something like that yeah new friend so she's still testing me out making sure everything was <laughs> okay you know you're you're okay I'm a, I'm, i think i think we can still be friends have i moved i've moved up some I, i'm just okay yeah. When, yeah, you're moving up slowly. No, slowly, because I got a lot to work on. So that's good. That's good. So we're glad that she's here. We're going to be talking about worship leading confidently, confidently leading worship. Laura, when you hear that phrase, what goes off in your mind? Prayer. Okay. Because um, it's really easy to be insecure about your set list, insecure about what your pastor thinks about the service, um, what the people are thinking as you are leading, and um, the worship services that are the most um, influential and powerful are the ones that are soaked in prayer hmm. during the week before Sunday, before we get on stage and lead worship. So, um Tell, t take us through, like, what, what do you do? Because, I mean, we've, we've been talking the whole past two weeks about this very issue. And there are some worship leaders that feel like maybe they're not good enough. They feel called, but sometimes the feelings creep in. Uh, maybe they think somebody's better than them at singing or what have you. And they have this feeling of, wow, but I can't do it like so-and-so. Um, how, how have you worked through those issues, and what do you do? They're, they're totally normal feelings, I think. Um, something that I think is so beautiful is that God calls the weak because then it gives him the opportunity to be strong through your weakness. So for me, my strength is my voice. But you put me in a leadership position as a worship leader, and I start to feel very afraid. Like, hmm. wait a minute, I have to lead all these people to the heart of God and what a responsibility and I have all these um, volunteers that are I have to bring together as a team and make something beautiful on Sunday and it can get really um, stressful and then also you have your pastor and he has a vision and you want to help implement that vision and so there's a lot of pressure as a worship leader um, so for me what I have noticed and I think it's important to have a really good relationship with your your pastor if you can um, I'll be honest with you I have shared my insecurities with my pastor and he's had to reassure me that I'm doing a good job and hmm. you know I'm doing what I need to do and people are receiving whatever is happening so I need to find confidence um, you know that if and for you guys, you know, if you've been called to be a worship leader, worship pastor, and you've been given that ability, don't be insecure about it because there's some pride in that, you know, insecure pride. It just becomes about you. You can't do that. So um, for me, I've been called to be a worship pastor. Do I believe in that calling? Well, I get insecure about it. But I have to know that God placed me here for a reason. Uh, he wouldn't have put me in this position if I wasn't ready. True. So um, I need to own up to it and be okay with it. Hmm. But what, what I do, and I love, I love having the um, ability to cast vision and do what I feel is necessary to make um, me be the best worship leader and have the best worship experience is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we um, open up the church for two hours of prayer. And I have to tell you, my pastor is amazing. He pays me to spend at least an hour in prayer every day. Wow, that <laughs> like, doesn't... You're, you're paying me nobody, to no, what? what about at home? Does any, No one pays me. That just... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just the concept was pretty awesome because why, why can't we be... At, like? Why is that a new concept to be paid to pray? But that's part of our role as worship leaders. We need to know the heart of God. We need to go to his throne room and say, what do your people need to sing this week? Um, what, do you, what do they need to hear? How can you help me structure this worship set this week? Because he's our leader and we need to take instruction from him and then implement it on Sunday. 
if we don't spend time praying, how in the world are we going to find out what he wants his people to hear? Yeah. So um, I spend a lot of time in prayer, and I journal, and I, I walk through my um, sanctuary, and I intercede for every single person that's going to be there on Sunday. And I, we, I have a prayer team that soaks that, that sanctuary in prayer. And by the time Sunday comes along, I feel like I'm so ready. There's no reason for me to fear anything because <laughs> I feel covered. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So for me, I love that and I just it really empowers me to do my job well and to leave the rest in God's hands love it so like um, I have to sign up for your job um, to get paid <laughs> do you get overtime does that does that qualify or you know no. that's too bad no, that we should see that on church awesome. that that's that that's the new profile everybody right now on churchstaffing.com you'll see lead prayer you get paid to pray <laughs> I can see it now. Every every worship leader is like, I can do that, you know. And it's ageless too. That's the best thing. Um, tell us about your church because, from what I understand, this is your first right full time worship leading ministry. Is that right? Yeah, you Where know, you're honestly, the leader. Yeah, my dad is a worship pastor, yeah. so I'm a worship pastor's kid. I married a worship pastor, and he was a worship pastor for 15 and a half years. And then now, for whatever reason, I have been given the job of being a worship pastor at this small church um, in, you know, the Coachella Valley. And I usually hide behind my dad or my husband, but now it's me, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's why I have to pray. <laughs> That's why she's got to get paid to pray, because, you know, if she's getting it for free, I don't know what kind of prayers are happening. Okay, so then there you go. That <laughs> lost the video. Maybe we need oh, to. Sorry. Can somebody pray for us? Sorry, okay, great. I had a phone call. Okay, it's that's all good. okay. Good. We want to make sure that you know we're not paying you for this. So yeah. we, I guess we get what we get, right? Everybody, was, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm but, sorry. But but no, this is but but this is awesome because um, Laura, I knew you like you know before when you're right. Your husband Brian, he was the worship leader, and now those roles have flipped. What's that like for you guys? It's weird. <laughs> um, I'll be honest with you. If I had my way, we would partner and we would be worship leaders together because we're very good at doing that. Yeah. And he brings a certain element of worship leading that he's really good at. And I bring a certain element of worship leading that I'm really good at. Yeah. And so to have us both together makes a very strong team. Mm. But at this moment, and, and actually... Our, my pastor is very kind. He allows Brian to lead worship for me. He sees us as a team. Cool, cool. But anyway, that's a new con another conversation. But at this time, um, I've been asked to do this job, and I love it because I feel so compelled to do it. I feel yeah. like it's it's in my blood. I was meant to be a worship leader. Um, call me a worship pastor, and I feel a little awkward about that. Yeah. But call me a worship leader and I'm like yeah because that's my heart um, and then to be able to get be given the freedom to have vision and say okay where can I take this and where does God want it to go is pretty awesome um, this little church has such a heart for the Lord uh, the, their vision is to bring uh, the Word of God in a fresh way uh, where we can just be firmly planted on the word. Yeah. Um, we want to be a house of prayer. We want to be a worship center where um, people come to our church knowing that they're going to be in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And uh, they are going to learn what it means to be a follower of Christ. And so that vision is so awesome. And I love being a part of that vision. So, um, can I go back real quick? Because I think we're hitting on something that's really cool, really key here. You mentioned, you just mentioned, I feel awkward about being called a worship pastor. Um, let's be vulnerable yeah. here. Why do you feel awkward? What's what's the awkwardness about it? Is it the uh, title? Is it the thought? Because I don't have the education. I've never gone to seminary. I've, you know, I, I don't know. I just I don't have the education. If you say Laura Marriott, the worship pastor, I'm not going to have a BA behind my name that says, "Oh, 
she studied theology at such and such. I didn't. Um, but I think God has given me the gift of exhortation, the gift of encouragement, the gift of shepherding. I know I have those things, but I don't have the education that normally worship pastors or pastors would have underneath their names. Okay, so but, it's hard for me. Yeah, but I know there's worship leaders right now that are probably screaming about that because you, we don't see, you know, uh, MDiv or BM after Paul the Apostle's name or after Abraham or after King David, you know? And yeah. if you are past, if you are shepherding people, then, uh, thanks, Script, that's right. And also, Jason Wallace, thank you, dude. I see you in Periscope. Um, Laura, you are a pastor. You are shepherding people. And I think, isn't that true, that this is the reason what probably is most people speed bump, most worship leaders, because they think, well, I'm not the leader that maybe I envision myself to be, or I'm not the pastor's type authority, or I don't want to be a pastor. But the, but the truth is, is that you're ministering the Word of God through music and especially through prayer like you just were telling us. So do you think in most worship leaders' minds that may be the one thing that is probably just, they're just hitting the wall because they think I'm not who I think I am, but the reality is is that you're probably more than what you think you are because of Jesus? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a better answer than that. Um, I know that I know that if you're called, you're called, and God makes a way for that. Um, hmm. And we were going to talk about women in, in worship or yeah. ministry. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, one thing that my pastor told me was, you know, I come under his authority, and he comes under God's authority. So he can have a woman uh, worship leader because, yes, I can lead as a woman, the congregation but he also is my shepherd you know my leader so in that way it makes me feel a lot better knowing that it's not just it's not me you know I don't know yeah. that stuff is a little weird you know everybody has their own theological ideas of should women be leading and that sort of thing um so what do you think uh, what do you think well, about that <laughs> I, I think so, because there are women that uh, were used by God in the New Testament, um, and they were very powerful. I mean, Jesus definitely used women in ministry, but I, I feel comforted knowing that my pastor is over me, because I don't know why. I just feel like that's right. Like, it just makes well, sense sure. biblically. Sure. Um, and that I'm not on my own, like, hey, I, it's just all about, I, I don't know. I just like that. So I'm okay with being the worship pastor knowing that I'm under his authority and his shepherding, and that helps me a lot. You know, so. I, I think it's, it's we need our senior pastors to lead us. I need mine to lead me, and I think that's, that's awesome. But do you feel that there are a lot of female worship leaders, male worship leaders included, that may feel like, well, he's the pastor, I'm not, and somehow you feel inhibited? Well, um, I've been in, under a lot of uh, leaders yeah. in the church, and there are different kinds of leaders. And I have to tell you that the leader that I'm under right now hmm. has given me a lot of freedom it and a lot like... of rope. He trusts yeah. me. Yeah. And um, that is so comforting and so freeing hmm. as a worship leader hmm. because you feel empowered like, Okay, he trusts in my ability. He trusts in what God has called me to do. So I can, in these boundaries, I can be free with what I feel God is calling me to do for this church body. Not wow. every leader is like that. Let's, so okay. it's hard. Yes, I love it. So, so why is it hard for most leaders? Because they don't feel like they're free. Most worship leaders, you mean? Yes. Well, because um, maybe... The vision that the pastor has isn't necessarily the vision that they agree with, or maybe it's um, putting them in a box, and they feel like they can do so much more, but they're not allowed to. And so you just feel kind of trapped within this box. You want to serve, and you want to be loyal, and yeah. you want to do God's work, but um, 
when you're you're put in a box and you're told what you can and cannot do, um, it gets very stifling and it actually um, it actually takes away your cre- creativity and your vision. And pretty soon you're just doing a job and you're just going through the motions and doing whatever you're told and you've lost who you are as as a worship pastor as a worship leader and uh, I don't think that's healthy so um, I'll, so I'll tell you and you're exactly right Laura I will say that most worship leaders right now in America and those that are watching or listening back right now to the podcast feel that way they're living that life so how does one how have you guys because I know that you know your husband too He's had his challenges like we all do. How does somebody work through that stifling? That's a great question. And I don't know if I know the specific answer because I think that a little bit we're kind of still going through it. Yeah. Um, I know that there's an importance in valuing your worship pastor and believing in his call and giving them freedom to do their job within the boundaries. I mean, I have boundaries. I, sure. I, the pastor has given me his vision. I know exactly what he'd like to have happen, but he allows me to figure it out on my own instead right. of telling me specifically what I'm supposed right. to do, what I can and cannot do. And, and so the freedom within those boundaries is so refreshing. Um, so anyway, what I was going to say was <clears throat> it is important to give pastors sabbaticals. If they have, are, if they're burning the candle at both ends, they are going to burn out really fast. Yeah. And it's very hard to recover from a burnout. Um, it's taken us a little over a year. Yeah. Um, and we're still trying to figure out how to heal and to grow and to figure out who we are. Sure. When what happens is you kind of lose your passion, you lose your vision, and you don't believe in yourself anymore Hmm. and you don't believe that there's a place for you anymore and it's really tough to get out of that um it's good to have sabbaticals probably every seven years it's good to give your worship pastor worship leader a break every six weeks or so Hmm. so that they can worship they can be refreshed um and and it's good to allow them time to pray and spend time with the Lord I mean, where does our strength come from? It comes from the Lord. And many times worship leaders are so busy, hmm. they that's like the last thing that they do. And then they're they're leading worship on Sunday in with fumes, hoping that God will do something with whatever they're giving. Hmm. But really what they have to do is they have to cover themselves in prayer. And um, the work is in the prayer. Yeah. It's it's in the prayer. Yeah. Totally. Because God makes it all work out. At the beginning, when I was like sitting there for praying for an hour, I was like, "How in the world do you pray for an hour? Like, I don't even know how to do that." <laughs> um, well, you get paid the, for it, so that shouldn't but, be that no, hard. No, but you know what it is? It's just <laughs> spending kidding. time with Him. Right. It's just right. it's just getting to know your heavenly Father. Why do we do this in the first place? It's to glorify Him. But it's every. It's but part it's, of our job. But it's every day. It's it's every day spending time with Jesus. It's not just the one hour event. I got to pray. I got to get into worship mode. Uh, Frederick yeah. Frederick right here on um, Facebook Live. Thanks, Frederick. He just commented saying, "I worship and feel in my head, but with the mic, it's just." And and I think for a lot of worship leaders, it's like that. How do I get into that kind of? Uh, mode where prayer I I become that praying uh, that praying vessel if you will where I'm walking with Jesus and that's just and what you're saying is this is a daily momently thing right it is a daily moment Um, for me personally I'll just tell you what I do but Mm. it's just an example you have to figure out what you're gonna do right but for me for whatever reason I wake up really early I wake up at 530 and I can't go back to sleep so instead of just you know being on Facebook and like searching stuff and I did it this morning and God <laughs> see, God little his little voice said um, do you do, wait what do you say do you love that more than me yeah oh, and wow. I was like oh, yeah I, that just hits no. the heart man so so then I turned it off yeah and what I do is I journal uh, it's not here what I do is I journal 
and I read the Bible, and I just, I vent. Okay, so we're going through the book of James, okay? And in the book of James, it talks about, at the very end, chapter 1, um, the solution to uh, our relationship with Jesus. And there's this word there that says pure. Well, pure means it comes from the word cathartic or cathartic. I can't say it, but it's basically cathartic. What does that mean? It means venting what's on your heart to the Lord, hmm. getting stuff out. I think we have to get things out. Much and like, today yeah. I got a lot of stuff out and God was telling me, let me handle that with Matthew eleven hmm. twenty eight. Hmm. Come to me, yeah. those who are weary. And then in, in was it Luke? It talks about... Um, you know, why do you worry about food and clothing? I'm going to take care of you. Yeah. You know, that's what the pagans do. Yeah. And those types of things, if we don't sit down and give God our attention and give him the time that he needs to talk to us, we're doing ourselves and our church ministry a disservice mm. because we're not being healed and taken care of. So how in the world can we heal and take care of right, our church family? Right, right, right. That's Titus right there talking. Absolutely. Amen. Uh well, so I, I got to ask this question. Um, as you have seen your husband go through the challenges, the pitfalls, uh, the, the barbed wire through his ministry, and as you said, it's taken you over a year for you guys to heal and recover. And now that you're the worship leader, now that God has helped you vent very much like what King David uh, has when we read in the Psalms, how has that renewed your perspective now as you are now a worship leader, worship pastor? That my God is going to take care of everything. Yeah. Um, like I'm going to come back to James because us, us worship pastors have to learn stuff too. Yeah. Like we have to listen to the sermon too. Amen. Amen. Um, and we're talking about James. And in the book of James, the first, the first chapter, it talks about Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you go through trials of many kinds. You know, it tests your faith. Well, a lot of people think it's about joy. Okay, so we need to have joy. No. What it's talking about is catching our trials by hmm. faith. Hmm. And um, I've been trying to do that so much. Where And I have a boatload of trials. I wrote them all down. I probably have more than 10. I don't know. I wrote them all down. But I have to catch them by faith and trust. My pastor says, Okay, there are two things that happen. Um, it is God's job to act. No, yeah, it's God's job to act. Mm -hmm. It's our job to trust. And so sometimes we totally get in the way and we mess some stuff up. Yeah. And it takes a lot longer to um, have things resolved. But when we step back and we, let, we act like Moses, where God said, Stand still, and I will fight for you. Mm. He will. That's but right. But it comes with faith and trust. That's not how the world talks and how the world responds. They say, you figure it out. It's all in you. You go do it. You yeah. go figure this out. It, you can do this. And God's saying, stop and let me do it for you. Yeah. And, and that's where prayer comes from because it makes you stop. Yeah. And it makes you allow him to take over. Yeah. I love that. And I love the illustration that you used uh, because that in, in the Old Testament that happened with uh, Moses, um, Jacob, um, Elijah, where and, and David, where the enemies would just turn on each other and fight themselves because they were because God told the prophet to stay where you are, trust in him. And it's like, I love that illustration because you're right. When we allow God to do his thing, then he does it, not us. But yet, if we're the ones that are out there fighting and doing it ourselves, we're just killing ourselves with everybody else. Exactly. And what does the word say? It says, stop striving. Right. Stop striving. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So when things really work out, I'm peaceful. When things don't necessarily work out, I'm striving. So there's this gauge yeah. that I try and stay in. Okay, how am I feeling in this situation? Am I striving? Am I fearing? Am I, you know, anxious? That's not from God. Am I peaceful? Am I resolved? Am I 
I, do I know he's going to fight for me? Yes, that's from God. So, so everybody, let me ask you, does, does this sound like indeed the words coming from a mere worship leader or a worship pastor? Because I'm telling you, <laughs> I mean, she's like just on it. Like God's spirit is just, just I mean, blazing through you, my sister. And it's just so awesome. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about confident worship leading. And this is what it's about. I mean, you're confident in Christ. So no matter what you have gone through, maybe how you see yourself, you know the truth because you know that the truth is in you, Laura. And I say that to encourage all of our worship pastors out there, our female worship leaders, our male worship leaders, because it's not you that's doing it. It's God that's doing it through you. So, Laura, thank you so much for just shining that light and, uh, and sharing your heart and being real with us today. You're welcome. I love it. I mean, this is what it's about. This, guys, wow. Amen, Abigail. Thank you. Uh, Jason Wallace, all of our friends, uh, Frederick, uh, asked us one question. He says, uh, but does it mean that we should neglect the vocal training right? Um, no. It means that we are to invest in the skill that God's given us. And it's, it's kind of like, you know, uh, someone gives you a present and you do very little to nurture whatever it is that you're given it's the same thing with our talents and our skills if we just let them go by the wayside we're not being faithful and honest um, to god but it's god who uses our skill it's not the skill itself it's your heart and it's it's what you do with what he's given you that's the whole key point and so we encourage you worship leaders all over worship musicians audio techs pastors that it's not you doing the work because when you feel like it is you doing the work that is the striving that Laura is explaining that is the I call it the pulling of teeth when I feel like things aren't working out and I feel like I'm pushing too hard it feels like pulling teeth that's because God's probably not in it and it's me that's in it and I got to pull myself away and say just like you Laura just say all right God you have to fight this for me or you just get me out of the bat battlefield. I'm probably just standing in the wrong field. I need to be somewhere Absolutely. else. Absolutely. You know, and it's relieving to feel that. So worship leaders don't feel like you got to keep fighting and fighting and fighting. It's okay to just drop it and just walk away. I mean, think about Abraham when God called him to say that, look, I'm going to birth nations and nations and nations from you. And out of righteousness and faithfulness, Abraham didn't stand around and say, what? Well, what do you mean? Like, you know, Moses did. And Moses kept tripping all over himself. But Abraham just said, okay, and just followed God. Now, yeah, he messed up like everybody else did, but it's through those, even in those challenging times, Abraham continually learned more and more and more about who God is. And I think that is the gold that we find within our trenches that we work through, our challenges, our our failures, because if we're if we're not learning, we're not growing. But Christ gives us that mercy and strength to learn more and more about His covering, His mercy. You talk so much today, Laura, about prayer and knowing who God is through that communion with God. And if we don't have that on a daily basis, then what are we doing? Then then we are subjected to just ourselves and just trying to do it just because we think we can, and not because maybe the Spirit is leading us because he should it's it's the reason why you're where you are is because it's God's purpose it's not yours and if it is yours maybe that's the thing that you need to be praying for and and turn those prayers to be different of God maybe get me out of the way uh, maybe this is something that I need to let I need to let you handle and not me and I think that's kind of like a daily momently prayer for us all that we should have uh, we can go on for like the next hour talking about this uh, I love it so much, but uh, we, we, ha we have to go. Laura, but thank you so much for coming on today and just being vulnerable, being who you are, and yet being uh, so beautiful here to share your testimony for people. Thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. So, guys, uh, we invite you to check us out, WTTU.co. Coming up this Thursday, David Balash is going to be sharing his story, his music, what's made him, how God has worked through him and his family and the awesome things that's happening. You can't miss that. That's coming up this Thursday at 11 a.m. Central. Just go to WTTU.co and become a member. You get to watch him and everybody else. That's David Balash. That's going to be on this Thursday, Paul Balash's son. 
uh, Crystal Lewis is coming tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central on our vocal webinar. So all you got to do, guys, if you become a member, I mean, you're only talking like the highest, the highest membership level that we have costs you probably a, um, two Netflix downloads or one Netflix download a month. That's, that's how much it comes out to be. And the reason why we do that is because we pack in all these great people with great experiences, with great stories, with great teaching, because we believe in helping you excel in what God's giving you to do. That's what it's all about, and it's to encourage on and uh, press on, champion on each other. So we hope that you join us. We love you guys so much. Thanks for joining us, and come back next Tuesday with another awesome special worship leader guest. It's going to be great. And uh, we love you guys. So be sure to check us back out, Jason Wallace, WTTU.co. Thanks, everybody, following us on iTunes and Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Facebook, Periscope. I think I mentioned everybody. Love you. Have an awesome, awesome day. We'll see you guys very soon. Wave goodbye, Laura. See you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>